Good morning, friends. We give thanks to God for the chance, the opportunity, the blessing to be able to come to this new day. Over so many toils, troubles, and snares, we have already come, and God has granted us this opportunity to worship on this first Sunday in 2021. We give thanks to God for the chance. We give thanks to God for this opportunity, and we give thanks to God for our blessing that is ours this time to lift up the name of the Lord. Won't you join as we look to God and say thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. morning and we give thanks for the opportunity to worship God through the giving of our gift. We have a couple of different ways for you to be able to communicate with us at Bethlehem and to support the ministry that God has established here uh, through your tithes and your offerings that there might be meat in God's house, that God could open up the windows of heaven and pour a blessing anew over you and yours that you don't have room enough to receive. We ask for you to submit your donations to us either through our website, 
uh, where you can go to see our mailing address, Bethlehem Baptist Church, 587 Reverend Tony E. Jackson, Senior Way, Newark, New Jersey, 07. 107 or to have access to the Givelify app uh, or Givelify service to make your pledge and rather your donation online. Whichever way you look to do that, we are hoping that you will stay on top of all of the avenues for giving that exist. Number one, the tithes and the offering and also our ongoing support in these tough times of people who are food insecure. Won't you give? Won't you be faithful? Won't you think of the needs of someone else? We want to be the house of bread in 2021 that God has established and we seek your help to feed and to minister to people that God gives us access to. We give thanks for you and for your fellowship and for your association and we hope that you will be faithful and cheerful in your giving. God bless you. Beloved, just a word about what we are about to enter into. We give thanks to God for this chance to get back to our normal schedule. We're looking forward to gathering with you in the coming week on Tuesday morning at 6 a.m. as we gather for prayer. Won't you all join us as we give thanks to God for bringing us into a new year and as we intercede for you and for your family members in this new time. We're also looking forward to gathering with you on Wednesday at 7 p.m. for our normal Bible study. And we're looking to begin a new season as we have left Advent and, and leaving Christmas and moving now as we prepare to march forward in 2021. We hope that you'll join us for study. And on Thursday, we're coming back together for prayer at 6 p.m. We hope that you'll be able to join us then, uh, 6 p.m. on Thursday for prayer. We give thanks to God for this opportunity and the ones that God will give us to be able to gather. Let us join up and go to God together.
Friends, won't you join me by assuming a posture of prayer? Blessed God, we seek you now. That you would share with us a word that can help us, a word that can guide us, a word that can lead us, a word that can change us. We ask God your help now. We may leave behind all of our distractions and hear from you. May the words of my mouth, God, and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. We in the past few weeks have been focused in on the Jesus birth narrative, the Jesus story. We, we remembered the opportunity to consider the star of Bethlehem, even in the great conjunction in our own skies, not too long ago. And we have thought about Jesus and the birth of Jesus and the greatness and the hearing of the angels singing. And now we are at a time when we have to consider something else in the early life of Jesus. And I'm speaking of that from Matthew, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. And in the 13th verse, New Revised Standard Version, we find these words. An angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he reads in the 14th verse, Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Here we see that the angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and gives Joseph instruction. And Joseph takes the child and the child's mother, Mary, and they go to another land where they will be outside of the reach of Herod, the, the, the governor that had been placed by the Roman uh, power in the land. And here, Herod is about to destroy folk who are uh, a threat to his power. Herod is about to kill Jesus because Herod believes that Jesus is going to, to usurp the power that has been invested in him. And in this sense, he feels the threat and says of elsewhere in this same text that he wants all of the male children killed two years and younger, corresponding to the time that the Magi say they first were witness to the signal that they ought to come and worship this new child, this new ruler, this new king, this new person on the scene. It makes you think as uh, Joseph has to take the child and the child's mother and go into Egypt, what it's like to travel with children. Uh, what it's like to go someplace with your kids. And, and I think back to when my daughter was young, she would ask the question when we were on the road going someplace, she would ask the question, are we there yet? This is a child that may be older than, than in the infant stage. This didn't happen the day after Jesus was born. This is some period after Jesus came on the scene and Joseph is taking the family into Egypt following the command of the angel of the Lord. He had a, a, a way of, of, of doing this. He had a, an immediacy to it, going by night 
uh, to do this and to follow the instruction that was given him. And it is a choice, though, that Joseph makes. It is a choice, though, to follow the instruction that was offered. It is a choice to go into the next place. And as we think about where we were just a couple of days ago, God did not offer us really the choice to step into 2021 after uh, saying, you know what, I want you to move from this place to that place. It kind of was something we had to go through. However, we are now in this place and we have been called out of that year and into another one. And yet, that which was threatening the Holy Family the day after they fled to Egypt was still alive. They had to remain there until Herod died. And one day they get the instruction to come back. And even then, Joseph is, is, is warned about going back to where he wanted to go. He went elsewhere into Nazareth, fulfilling the prophecy. Oh, a lot happens in this traveling that the Holy Family does. Jesus is taken into Egypt and is brought out, perhaps a parallel to the children of Israel, perhaps going in and being with an Israelite community in Egypt and staying there. What did they do? How long did they stay? What did they teach this young child? How did this child grow up? What were the things that the parents were doing? How were they preparing themselves? What were they doing in the time that they were in Egypt? We don't know all of that. The text doesn't tell us. But perhaps there's a lesson for us in this text. Perhaps there's a lesson for us in this text. Here, Joseph has the choice to remain in Bethlehem where he knows a little bit about the situation and he knows some of the people and he knows what he's dealing with and yet he gets up and he goes and takes the family into Egypt and he leaves what is perhaps more comfortable and goes into an uncomfortable situation, not knowing exactly what he's going to face, seeing some unknown uh, along the way, not even knowing knowing what the trip is going to be like, but yet he moves from one point to another. He goes into this new situation. Perhaps he was still weary. Perhaps it, they were still dealing with the travails. Let me tell you something, when you got a newborn and even as that newborn moves into toddlerhood, t you are consistently weary. You are consistently dealing with things. And then you have to get up and make this major move. This is something else. And perhaps this little Jesus on the road from one point to another is saying or asking the question, are we there yet? Have we reached where we were supposed to be going? What is it that we're dealing with now? Here, a thought that may help us in this time. Because we've been through so much in this past year. Because we've lost so much in this past year. Because we've hurt so much, we've been bloodied, we've been beaten, we've been uh, uh, torn down, we have been gone, we've gone through some stuff in this last year. And here now we have this situation, we have come into this new year, and we have all of these hopes, and we have all of these dreams, and we have all of these promises. Are we there yet? Are we where we were hoping we would be? Uh, the things that we have been hoped for, the things that we have been looking for, this just being able to step out of the uncomfortableness of 2020 and move into an unknown in 2021, are we going to see our expectations met? Are we going to see the hope, uh, that which we had been hoped for, uh, delivered to us? Are we going to be safe? Are we going to be protected? Are we going to be Blessed? Are we going to hear what we we're hoping to hear? Are we there yet? Friends, the temporal changes that we've witnessed as we've gone from one year to the next haven't changed the whole of our situation, just like what the family was dealing with. The fact that they were led from Bethlehem on into 
Egypt, uh, the situation hadn't changed. The things they were facing hadn't changed. They were just shifting their position. And then and, and they shifted their position and we don't know what it was they were dealing with or what it was they were living through or what it was they were being provided even in Egypt. But the question may have been asked even by Mary, even by Joseph, are we there yet? Where is there? Are we in a place where we are protected? Are we in a place where we are supposed to be? Are we in a place where we can receive and grow and get what we need to be able to make it? Is, is this it? Is this the place that we're supposed to be? Time and space are connected and here we are in 2021 and on this third day of January in 2021, are we there yet? Where's there? This place that we were hoping for of peace, this place of normalcy, this place of, of rest, this place of blessing, this place of, well, I can get back to the grind and I can focus in on what I need to focus in on. Are we there yet? I believe that God may be calling us from Judah into Egypt. God may have called us from 2020 into 2021 and into a new time and into a new place. And let's make the most of our Egypt experience while we are here, because one day we will be called out into another time and into another place. And in this new time and in this new place, more may be required of us. New things may be required of us. As Matthew turns the page from the second chapter to the third chapter, we start to talk about John calling for his cousin, the one who is to come. And we start to talk about Jesus beginning the new ministry. Things move quickly in the text after they are returned from Egypt. And we perhaps are going to be dealing with a quick transfer and new things coming at us fast and furious. We need to be ready. God may be calling us, beloved. God may be calling us to a place of repose. You may have come in hot into 2021, as it were. You may have been pushing on up until the last day of the year. You may be tired. You may need rest. You may need respite. You may need some time just to recharge your batteries. Oh, Monday is coming and the new work week will hit us. But perhaps you and me, we need a rest. And we need to live into this resting place. We need to be in this new time and in this new space able to recharge our batteries. We need to engage in those spiritual practices that lift us up, that, that charge us up, that, that make us new, that get us ready for that which we are going to face. We need to be in a place of repose where you can lay back and rest and sleep and have time to deal with the inner person, the, the spiritual person, the, the person that needs to be propped up and readied for what we are going to face. We are in a place of repose and now that you have been called into it, don't leave before it's time to go. Don't leave before the angel says, okay, that's enough. It's time for you to leave. Stay there. Don't, hey, listen, here's the next thing. When you've been called into this place and you've been called into this time, do like Joseph did, go. Do like Mary did, go. Do like they did with Jesus, you go. And then you get into this new opportunity to rest. The choice is yours. You might choose to stay in the place where you are at heightened awareness and heightened action and, and heightened responsibility. And perhaps that's not what God is calling you into. God has said, I need for you to come into this new land. It may be uncomfortable. It may be strange. It may be something that you don't know how to face, but you need to. 
You need the repose. God may be calling us into a place of repose. Do not reject it. Go in. It can, it can wait. Uh, uh, your cell phone can be turned off. Your, your television can be turned off. Take a few moments and get on your knees and take a few moments and open up your text and take a few moments and reach your hand up into the air and say, thank you, Lord. Take a few moments and rest. God may be calling us to a place of repose and, 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 and in that God may be calling us to a place of readiness, a place of of preparation, a place where, where you might not only get the rest you need, but you might get further instruction. What did Joseph and Mary teach this child? What conversations did they have? Think back. I saw some pictures of my baby today as she was a young girl. I just wanted to go back into those moments and think about those lessons. Think about the things we taught her. Think about the things we went to go see. Think about the times that we took a walk. Think about the times that, that she was playing in the park. Think about the times where we have gone through these things and we have talked about what it means to be a person in this society. Oh, maybe you are getting Ready. Maybe, maybe you are reading more. Maybe you are listening to more sermons. Maybe you are seeking more wisdom. Maybe you are in a place of readiness, that, that you are in a place of preparation, that you are in a place of getting yourself together so that when you are called upon, you can take the next move. Oh, I don't know what it was they were doing. What did Joseph do every day when they were in Egypt? It's easy to hear, to read these words and to move on so quickly. But what was each day like? What did they eat for breakfast? How were they preparing themselves? Maybe in this time of readiness, you have decided that you need to change your health situation. You need to exercise a little bit more. You need to get on the floor and do some more push-ups. You need to lift up the weights and you need to strengthen the mind. Uh, this might be a period of time where you need to read more books. And this might be a period of time where you need to walk more miles. And this might be a period of time that you need to establish some new habits. And this might be a period of time that you need to clean up what it is you're eating. This might be a period of time that you change the way you're thinking and that you change the way you're speaking and that you change the way you're relating, that you take inventory of yourself and reflect on that which God is leading you to. God may be leading you to a place of readiness. You can do what you want to do or you can do like Joseph who, who said, we going when the angel said go. You can be like Mary who left when the angel said it's time to move and they took Joseph and Mary and Jesus and they all went into this new place. Do not reject the call that God offers in this day to a new place of readiness. Perhaps God is leading us to a place of repose. Perhaps God is leading us to a place of readiness. And through your rest and through your repose, God may be then ready to lead you into a place of responsibility. You may be more able to respond and hear the word of God and respond to what God says and move according to the will of God in this place of, of, of repose and in this place of readiness and in this place where you can go and follow into a new responsibility. Here, we get the chance to see Joseph leaving Egypt and moving into uh, Nazareth. And this is showing us that he is ready to respond he is ready to act. He is ready to do. And maybe in this new 2021, God is waiting for you to do what perhaps you didn't do the way God wanted you to do in all of the years past. Maybe God was saying, son, daughter, 
I need for you to do thus and so. And sometimes, I don't know about you, beloved, but perhaps if I look back over my life, I have remembered the time when God is calling me and I'm looking over there. Or God is calling me over this way and I'm walking over that way. And God is calling me over that way and I'm walking over this way. I'm reading my Facebook timeline. I'm watching my television. I'm listening to my music, but I'm not operating in the will of God. And in this time, in this new day, on this third day of January in 2021, I just, I'm saying that there may be that God is calling you into a new area of responsibility and you ought to go. The question is, are we there yet? Are we there? Are we at the point at which we are ready to listen to what God is saying and do what God is calling us to do? Oh, it's not only about reaching our destination. Perhaps our destination is really our starting point. Are we there yet? Are we ready? Are we ready to be obedient? Are we ready to be mature? Are we ready to be discipled? Are we ready to take action? Are we ready to release that which we ought to just go on ahead and give God control over? Are we ready to take the responsibility that God is requiring for us to take? Are we there yet? Are we there yet. Are we at the point like Joseph and Mary and Jesus were when they were individually and collectively called upon to do a thing? They were ready to respond with a yes and a yes and a well, I don't know, but a yes, yes, yes. And this is where we need to be right now in this space, in this time, as we get ready to launch upon into a new year. Are we ready? Are we there yet? Are we there? Have we been through enough to let us know that we better do this God's way? Have we gone through enough for us to know that we can't do this in our own strength? Have we gone through enough for us to know that tomorrow is not promised to any of us? And while it is day, we ought to work for night comes when no one can work. Are we there yet? Beloved, are you there yet? Fred Sullivan, am I there yet? I like to think that I am. But I just want to say that that which we are facing, even though we hated 2020 in so many different ways, even though we look to 21 with so much promise and so much hope, the days that we are facing might still be dark, might still have some a relative feeling of hopelessness. Take heart. We are waiting on God to call us and we are going to go into our place of repose, into our place of readiness, into our place of responsiveness. And when we go, God will lead us there and God will lead us out and God will bless the enterprise as we seek to operate in the will of God. As we seek to do what God is calling us to do. Why? Because this is what God requires. We give thanks to God who, who sent Jesus into the world who did this. When it was time to move, Jesus moved. When it was time to rest, Jesus rested. When it was time to, 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 to prepare and to be ready, Jesus got ready. And when it was time to go up on that cross and be lifted high and stretched wide, Jesus was in a place of positive response and went through for us. Jesus is our model. Jesus is our, our brother. Jesus is the one who leads us. Jesus is the one who strengthens us. Jesus is the one who encourages us. And Jesus is the one whom we must follow. Let us go. Are we ready? Are we there yet? Yes, beloved, in this day, on this third day of 2021, are we there yet? Yes, we are. We've been through too much. We've been through too much. We've been through too much to waste time now. Let's go to where God calls. Pray with me now. Gracious God, we thank you that you are yet calling us 
Even though we have failed you, even though we have failed ourselves, even though we have done the wrong thing, even though we have rejected your invitation, we come now saying and declaring that we are there, we are ready, we are looking to be responsive to your call, to, be, to rest and to readiness and to responsive. We ask God that you would help us in this moment, that you would prepare us for the next step. And God also that you would set yourself up to knock on each and every one of our hearts. For those of us that we invite right now as we open up the doors of our church, even in prayer, God, we ask that if one is there and is looking to connect with Jesus for the first time, able to confess that Jesus is Lord. God, we ask that you would raise them up now and that you would help us to play the role you have ordained for us to play in their development. But if all are with you at this time, God, we ask that you would help us each and every one to live up to that which we have already committed, to that which you have already called us. God, introduce us to the people that you want us to be and help us to go forth in this new year, knowing that there is no time to waste. We are there. We are ready. And we are looking for you to lead us on. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Beloved, we are grateful to have this time together. And as we prepare now to transition into our communion time, as we sit around this table to which Jesus invites us to gather and to assemble with the saints from 2,000 years ago to today, we ask that you would lead us and guide us into this fellowship for the first time in this year.
Friends, we give thanks today for this opportunity that God has offered to us to join around this table with those who have believed in Jesus since that first night that Jesus held this dinner with his friends. We give thanks for this chance to come around this table one more time. And while we are doing this virtually and closing in on 12 opportunities to have done this virtually, we yet give thanks for the opportunity for you to gather in your home, as, as so many did in the early days of the church, with your elements and your family members, and remember the name of the Lord. Pray with me now. God, we give thanks for that which we are about to take into us. We ask God that you would change this from a common to a spiritual use, that we will not be the same after we eat it and after we drink it. We give thanks to you now for Jesus. We give thanks to you now for your redemptive move. We give thanks to you now for calling us around this table where we can remember that you love us and that you care for us and that Jesus came to do a work to bring us into relationship with you. Help us now in this moment as we remember Jesus, our Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Beloved, the Lord Jesus on the night of his arrest took the bread and after he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Take and eat. And as often as you eat it, do this in remembrance of me. And I'm ministering in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, say, take and eat and be thankful in your hearts. And in the same manner, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the remission of your sins. As often as you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And I ministering in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, say, take and drink and be thankful in your hearts. Every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of the risen Lord until he comes. Beloved, I don't take for granted not a single opportunity that God offers me to come and to worship with you. And as I stand here in the sanctuary at 587 Reverend Tony E. Jackson Senior Way, I am thankful to be the pastor and to have this opportunity to begin a new year in worship of God and ministry at Bethlehem with you. And I look forward to all the opportunities that God will give us in person and virtually in this year and ask that you be always asking that question to yourself. Am I there yet? And I hope your response will be yes. I am ready for repose. I am ready for readiness. I am ready for responsibility. And I will recall and I will move as God calls me to move. I will go where God, where God calls me to go. I will do what God calls me to do. This is better than a resolution. This is a commitment. This is better than a commitment. This is a statement of who we are. Until we have the opportunity to come together again, please receive this benediction. And now unto the one who is able to keep us from falling and to present us before his glory faultless and with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power now and evermore. And the people of God said, amen and amen. Go in peace, beloved, and may the peace of God go with you.